Talking Movies. Weird Westerns. We have looked at beautiful, underrated, overrated, comedy, crossover, black and white, and many more westerns with many of the actors that played in them. Today we are going to take a look at Weird Westerns. Why not? They have been around for years and deserve their time in the sun. If you like this video, take a look at my channel for many more. The link is in the description. Let's get started. Apologies up front for any mispronunciation of names. The Phantom Empire, 1935. Before the supernatural creatures in the golden age of movie serials, our planet was protected from bizarre forces by none other than Gene Autry. In The Phantom Empire, the singing cowboy discovers that his famed radio ranch sits on a radium deposit that is coveted by unscrupulous land speculators. Beneath the deposits is the lost civilization of the Moranians, led by Queen Tika. The denizens of the subterranean culture battle us surface dwellers with such amazing devices as television. Despite battling the Moranian robots and the evil Lord Argo, Jean still had time to sing a few campfire tunes. If that wasn't weird enough, try this. The Terror of Tiny Town, 1938. Sorry to say, one of the worst movies ever made. The Terror of Tiny Town was Hollywood's first all midget western. Try making that today. A black hat versus white hat story, played out by a cast of 60 little people, led by Billy Curtis, later appearing as a munchkin in The Wizard of Oz, and Clint Eastwood's sidekick in High Plains Drifter. The gags are amusing in a politically incorrect way. The cowboys ride Shetland ponies and enter the saloon by walking under the swinging doors. But when it becomes apparent that Tiny Town has nothing else to offer, the film quickly becomes tedious before mercifully ending after 62 minutes. Johnny Guitar, 1954. This kinky story of black leather garbed bar owner Vienna, Joan Crawford, her boy toy Johnny Guitar, Sterling Hayden, and jealous rival Emma Small, Mercedes McCambridge, culminates in one of a few girl versus girl showdowns in Western history. Truth be told, this is a cult movie more popular amongst those who laugh at Westerns than those who embrace them, but it's worth a look to watch two scenery chewing divas tear into each other. Swamp of the Lost Monster, 1957. For those who wallow in the dregs of the medium, Celebrate Murray's skills as an importer of fine Mexican cinema, which achieved a zenith of sorts with the 1964 classic Wrestling Women vs. the Aztec Mummy. Swamp of the Lost Monster combines the rubber-suited monsters of which Murray is so fond with the western tale of a cowboy, Gaston Santos and his horse, Moonlight, saving a family in peril. Gaston's singing sidekick, Squirrel Eyes, may be one of the most annoying characters in movie history. There are a few scenes of cowboy heroics, but they are quickly overshadowed in the memory of the sight of a giant fish monster using a telegraph machine. Teenage Monster, 1957. A meteorite lands on the Cannon family homestead in a little western town, circa 1880. Pa is killed, and younger Charles Cannon is subjected to a strange ray that transforms him into a psychopathic furball. His mother, Fearing for her son's safety, locks the boy in the basement. It's what you'd expect from producer-director Jacques Marquette, the man behind such triumphs as The Brain from the Planet Arose and Attack of the 50-Foot Woman. The special effects budget was so limited that a meteorite was created by someone throwing a sparkler across the screen. Jack Pierce, the legendary makeup artist who designed the look of Universal's greatest movie monsters, including Frankenstein and the Wolfman, must have run out of money or materials when he got the Teenage Monster assignment, as his creation looked like a cousin it costume from the 99 cent store. Curse of the Undead, 1959. Movies about cowboy vampires. Those don't ride into town every day. Eric Fleming, just prior to landing the role of trail boss Gil Favor on Rawhide, plays Preacher Dan, a cattle town man of the cloth who investigates when young women start dying from massive blood loss. Suspicion falls upon Drake Robbie, Michael Pate, a gaunt gun for hire with a strange aversion to sunlight. Here's the real shocker. Curse of the Undead is pretty good. Performances are much better than you'd expect. And the stark black and white cinematography effectively masks the movie's low budget. 
they doomed all who oppose him? Drink! Zachariah, 1971. Long before Miami Vice, Don Johnson found steady work as the king of the counterculture cult film, prior to appearing in such deservedly forgotten oddities as A Boy and His Dog and The Harad Experiment. Johnson co-starred in Zachariah, which was billed as the first electric rock western. Unfortunately, nobody pulled the plug. It's the story of two wannabe gunfighters who joined forces with the Cracker Band, a troupe of travelling musicians played by Woodstock Fets, Country Joe and the Fish. Other music in the film is provided by fiddler Doug Kershaw and the James Gang, not Frank and Jesse, but the Cleveland Power Trio featuring Joe Walsh before he joined the Eagles, jazz drummer Elvin Jones, who played with saxophonist John Coltrane, among others, plays a gunslinging bad guy as well as the fastest drummer in the West. There's also an appearance by Dick Van Patten, just the guy you'd expect to see in a counterculture western, with a psychedelic soundtrack. The popular comedy troupe, Fire Sign Theatre, scripted the movie but promptly disowned Zachariah after one screening. Russell's Rhapsody, 1985. Take a 1940s singing cowboy star and transport him into a real rough and tumble western town. Imagine Roy Rogers riding Trigger into the series Deadwood. Unfortunately, Russell's Rhapsody squanders its one inspiration and impressive cast. Tom Berenger, Andy Griffith, Cella Ward, Marilu Henna. With silly lowbrow humour, the movie never strikes the right balance between the straight shooting naivete of singing cowboy Rex O'Herlihan, Tom Berenger and the real-world sensibilities of a West that not need be censored for sex and violence. Near Dark, 1987. Most of the movies on this list are worth seeing only for a few laughs, but Near Dark proves it's possible to meld the horror and Western genres and come up with something worth your time. Happy-go-lucky cowboy, Caleb, Adrian Pastar, meets a mysterious young girl who runs with a gang of outlaw vampires. She converts him with a bite, and as a new creature of the night, Caleb has no choice but to join the tribe, which includes bloodsuckers such as Bill Paxton and the always creepy Lance Hendrickson. But when the gang goes after his family, Caleb takes a stand. The Adventures of Briscoe County, Jr., 1993 to 1994. This short-lived TV series brings us full circle, back to the beginning of our list and the Phantom Empire. There was a nostalgic, whimsical quality to the science fiction adventures of good-natured hero Briscoe County, Bruce Campbell, and each episode ended with a tune in next week cliffhanger, just like the vintage serials. The results proved too quirky for most viewers, but now the series still boasts a devout cult following. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave me your comments. I really appreciate likes, shares and subscribing. As always, please hit the notification button to get my new videos. Take it easy. Bye for now.